Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Loretta Young and Fred McMurray in True Confession. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Ananias, Baron Munchausen, and Paul Bunyan developed considerable fame as tellers of tall tales. But they were small fry compared to Helen Bartlett, a young lady in tonight's play, True Confession. When a young wife usually says the wrong thing at the right time, and always tells a lie with the best intentions. She's lucky to have a lawyer for a husband. And by the same token, the lawyer is lucky if he can keep his wife and himself out of jail. It's a, it's a great help if they, if they love each other, and that's the case in True Confession. It's an exciting comedy with everything in it, from romance to murder, with waste ups for lunacy and laughter. And in spite of her weakness for exaggeration, I think you'll find Helen Bartlett a charming heroine. As this lovely liar, we present Loretta Young in a role that any comedian would give her right arm to play. And as the distracted husband, Fred McMurray has the same part he played in the Paramount picture, True Confession. Loretta and Fred are an ideal starring team. And teamwork, of course, is the secret of any successful project, both on the stage and off. That's why so many good homemakers team up with Lux Flakes. They know that half their worries go out the window when Lux Flakes comes in the door. Now the curtain rises on our team of stars, Loretta Young as Helen Bartlett and Fred McMurray as Kenneth Bartlett with Ruth Donnelly as Daisy in Act One of True Confession. In a modest office building in New York City is the very modest law office of Kenneth Bartlett. One room, one desk, no secretary. This morning, business is progressing as usual. Our young attorney, his feet resting comfortably on the edge of the wastebasket, is contemplating his diploma. That's all he has to contemplate, for he hasn't had a paying client for weeks. As he reads the parchment that was to be the key to success, he's moody and depressed, unaware that even at this moment, his charming wife is dialing his number excitedly, bursting with great news. As the phone rings, Kenneth Bartlett snaps to a position of dignity. <clears throat> Good morning. Kenneth Bartlett's office. Hello, Ken. This is me. Oh, hello, Helen. Now, darling, listen, I've got one. I've got a case for you. Yeah? Well, uh, who is it? What's it about? Well, you know Zimmerman's Meat Market, two stores this side of the corner? Yeah. You know, darling, the Zimmerman's that are going to sue us if we don't pay? Well, it's Mr. Zimmerman's wife's cousin. And his name is Tony Crouch. Yeah, but what happened? Well, now, darling, wait a minute. I'm telling you. Tony Crouch is in trouble. He's accused of stealing a carload of hams. And Mrs. Zimmerman thinks that if you handle the cage for Tony Crouch, that we'll be able to pay her husband for the meat. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, but uh, he didn't do it, did he? I mean, he didn't really steal the carload of hams. Well, darling, I forgot to ask. Probably he didn't, though, Ken. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he didn't. But even if he did, you've got to take this case, see? Well, if he didn't do it, I'll be glad to represent him. But if he's guilty, I won't touch it. You know how I feel about things like that. Now, Ken, listen, I found this case for you, and you've got to take it. I said I won't plead not guilty for a thief. He didn't steal the hams, all right, but if he did... He's on I... his way to your office now, darling. And this is the biggest chance you've ever had. Will you please call me just as soon as you've talked to him? Sure, I'll call you. I'll let you know what happens. And will you please take the case, darling? You've been... Well, I mean, uh, let me know right away, won't you? Yeah, all right. So long, baby. Goodbye, darling, and good luck. Hello? Hello, Helen. Oh, yes, Ken. He stole the hams. What? Mrs. Zimmerman's cousin stole the hams. I just threw him out of the office. You threw him out? Oh, Ken, doesn't it mean anything to you that you've thrown out the cousin of our butcher's wife? Where are we going to get our meat now? Helen, how can you talk like that when I've told you the man is guilty? I don't care whether he's guilty or not, darling. Somebody's got to represent him. Baby, listen, I love you, but I'm not going to argue with you about a man who promised to pay me out of the money he gets for selling the hams. Oh, all right. Goodbye, darling. I'll see you tonight. He stole the hands. Ah, oh, well. Hello? Hello, Helen. I got your message. Oh, hello, Daisy. I was taking some dictation from Mr. 
Davenport, so I couldn't call you back. What do you want, Helen? Well, I want you to come over right away. I have to see you. Say, what do you think I am? I can't walk out of the office in the middle of the afternoon. What's it all about? Well, I can't tell you over the phone, Daisy. You'll have to come over. I told you I can't leave. I have to stay here. But, Daisy, I... Oh, all right, then. I, I guess I'll have to tell you. What? Well, Daisy, I, I went to the medicine cabinet. I was dizzy, Daisy, and I... I took the wrong bottle. What? Oh, Daisy. The wrong bottle? Uh-huh. You mean poison? Well, I don't know. I just feel... Oh! Helen! Helen! Helen, let me in! Let me in! Helen! Helen! Hello, Daisy. Oh, Helen. How do you feel? What was it? What kind of a bottle? Huh? I said... Helen, you were lying again. You didn't take poison at all. Oh, that. Oh, no. I just want to see Daisy. Come on in, honey. Oh, I suppose it doesn't mean a thing to you that I practically have heart trouble from rushing over here. Oh, I'm sorry, Daisy, but you have to help me. Well, what is it this time? Another of your fairy tales? Oh, no, no, honest. Oh. Now, Daisy, you know Ken isn't doing well, and my stories aren't selling. Of course not. Of course they aren't selling. The people you write about, gee, they're crazy. Who could believe them? I believe them. I live every story with them. Well, anyway, Daisy, like I said, we're not doing so well uh, financially, I mean. So, Daisy, I, uh, I got a job. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> In other words, you're inviting Ken to walk out on you. He won't say a word. Oh, no. All he's done so far is tell you that if you go to work, it'll be over his dead and battered body. Well, we can't live on what he's making. My job starts tomorrow morning, and Ken isn't going to offer the slightest protest because he isn't going to know. Listen, Helen, if you think you can hold a job six days a week without Ken knowing it, you're ready for a mentality test. It's five days a week. All right, five. Uh-huh, and three hours a day. And that leaves me plenty of time for my writing. Three hours a... Uh-huh. Steady, Helen, steady. Oh, no, 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 it's true. I'm a private secretary to a, um, a broker. Is that so? Uh-huh. Hmm, isn't that nice? <laughs> isn't it hot out? And $50 a week. Five dollars a, mm-hmm. a week. Three, do- three hours a day. Fifty dollars. <laughs> Helen, how does your head feel? Is there a pressure? No, darling, I'm not kidding. I'm going to learn shorthand. See, that's not all you're going to learn. Huh? <laughs> Who ever offered you a proposition like that? Mr. Crayler. Mr. Otto Crayler. He was an old friend of my father's. And even if he fires me, he'll have to give me two weeks' notice. And that's a hundred dollars anyway. How are you going to explain the extra money to Ken? No. Well, I'll tell him that I've finally ha- learned how to manage efficiently, you see. He'll not only believe me, he'll be proud of me. Helen, I wish I had your imagination. Uh-huh. No, I don't either. Say, what am I doing here? You don't need me. Oh, I do, I do. I'm all excited, Daisy. And Ken will notice if we're alone and ask questions. Well, you know how lawyers ask questions, sort of um, practicing-like. Well, I'm sorry, Helen, but I've got to go. Oh, now, Daisy, wait a minute. Hello. I'll... Oh. I was just going to ring. Yeah? Helen, who's he? It's a man. Say, mister, look, I'll, I'll pay you next week, huh? Don't make me laugh. Yo, it's $12, and I'm here to get the typewriter. Hey, you have a nerve. Get out of here. Don't make me laugh. Nothing can make you laugh. No, listen, mister, really. I'll pay you next week. Honest, I will. Will you please leave the typewriter here until then? I need it in my business. No. Please. Don't touch that. Why not? Oh, well. All right. Go ahead and take it. Why should I worry about what's going to happen to you? Huh? What do you mean? I was just talking about my husband. But go ahead and take it. Maybe he won't see you. Say, I'm not afraid of your husband. Well, that's because you don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, what is wrong with him? Well, I guess I have to tell you. He's insane. <laughs> Helen! <laughs> well, Daisy, he might as well know the truth. You, uh, you mean your own husband is nuts? Absolutely nuts. Well, so what? Your husband is ratty. Is he locked up? Oh, no. No, we're trying to get him away quietly. You see, he's been insane ever since we lost our baby. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. The first time I realized he was insane was about a week ago. It was two in the morning. I woke up and saw a light on in here. I got up and tiptoed in, and and there was my husband, smiling at that typewriter and talking baby talk and patting it. Patting it? Yes, patting it. Oh, it was heartbreaking. And then it dawned on me what had happened. He thinks that typewriter is our baby. Our little Harold. That's a, that's a cute name, Harold. Yes, isn't it? 
But go ahead and take the typewriter. Maybe you can get away with it before he comes home. But if you meet him, you'll never get through that doorway alive. Say, a guy like that ought to be locked up. He can cause a lot of trouble. The thing for me to do is to get this baby, I mean this typewriter, out of here right away. Well, suit yourself. It's your own risk. Hello oh. there. How's my baby? Baby? Hey, Ken, come in, dear. Oh, hello, Daisy. Hello, Ken. I uh, didn't know you had guests, huh? Well, Ken, I want you to meet uh, Daisy's friend. This is Mr. McDougal. This is my husband, Mr. Bartlett. How do you do? I'm glad, glad to know you. Uh, Mr. McDougal was just leaving, dear. He, he brought Daisy here. Just leaving? Uh -huh. With the typewriter? Well... Uh, no, no, well... Well, I gotta go. Oh, don't hurry off. Uh, where's the shaker, Helen? I'll mix up a batch of poison. Poison? Poisoned? Say, he's not gonna poison me! Let me out of this place! Hey, what's wrong with that guy? Uh, I don't know. Why, you do too, Daisy. You told me he goes crazy every time he hears the word poison. On account of he drank some bad liquor once and it went to his head. Remember? Oh, oh, of course. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I was talking about cocktails. Where'd you meet him, Daisy? Why, uh, uh well, I, uh... She, uh... They went to school together, dear. Yes, we went to school together. <laughs> well, uh, I'll have to leave now. Uh, Mr. Mr. McNoonan is waiting outside for me. His name isn't McNoonan, it's McDougal. Well, then, darling, that's what she said. Yes, that's what I said. Goodbye. Goodbye, Daisy. Well, dear, uh, how do you feel? Who was that man? What man? Who was he? Oh, oh you mean Daisy's boyfriend, Mr. McCormick, huh? Mr. McDougal. <laughs> That's right, McDougal. Why did he run out of here? Well, I told you, dear, he, he ate some lobsters once... Someday, right in the middle of one of your lies, I'm going to get up, put on my hat, and walk out that door. I'm going to walk all the way to China. Now, who was that man? Well, now, just because Daisy brings a boyfriend over here, a crazy boyfriend that she met at her office, at I don't... At school. Think... All right, darling, at school, who I Who was he? All right. He uh, came here to take the typewriter away, and I didn't want him to take it. So what did you do? Well, I told him that you thought the typewriter was your baby and that you'd kill him if he touched it. In other words, you told him I was crazy. Well, uh, yes. Well, that's fine. That's just great. There, you see. I, I tell the truth, and, and, and now you're mad at I'm me. I'm not mad. I was just thinking I could wring your neck, that's all. Well, I don't blame you. I didn't mean to tell him that, but... All of a sudden, it just popped out. As usual. Do you remember the time I came into the room and discovered you told people I was a reformed bank robber? Well, that's only because all the other women were bragging about their husbands. And the and time I, I met the Ralsons on the street after you told them we couldn't play bridge because I was in the hospital with gallstones? Well, you know we can't play bridge at all well together, dear. I... Oh, all right. Go ahead and get mad at me and let's have it over with. Oh, what's the use? I've done that. I'm living a nightmare. The darndest nightmare a man ever lived. Ken, Ken. Gee, I, I wouldn't have had to tell that man a lie if I'd had the money to pay him, would I? Oh, thanks. Oh, well, darling, I don't mean it's your fault. I, I mean, if, if only you'd let me go out and get a job. I'm then taking they'd... care of you. If, you. if you went to work, I'd be a confessed failure, and I'm not that yet. Oh, of course you're not. But if I had a job, I mean, secretly, maybe. It... Do you know what I'd do if you went out and got a job behind my back? Yes. Are you going to try it? No. Are you telling the truth? Uh, Ken, I, I might as well tell you. What? I've made a resolution. From now on, I'm telling the truth, so help me. I'm going to be proud of you for what you represent, and I'm going to manage on our budget with money to spare. Oh, Helen. Good morning, madam. Good morning. I'm Mr. Crayler's new secretary. Very good. Hmm, very good indeed. Uh -huh. <clears throat> this way, please. Thank you. Do you wish breakfast, miss? Oh, no. Uh, am I supposed to eat here? If you like. Oh. In this room, please. Oh. Is this his office? Yes, miss. But um, uh, doesn't Mr. Crayler have any other office? I mean, uh, maybe in an office building? An office building? Uh-huh. <laughs> Will you have a drink? Uh, Say, what kind of a place is this? Ah, oh, good morning, my dear. That'll be all for us, I. Yes, Mr. Crayler. Good morning, Mr. Crayler. I I'm late. Oh, aren't we all? You can call me Otto. After all, an old friend of the family, you know. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, Otto. <laughs> You're going to work out all right, my dear. Sit down. Uh, thank you, sir. If I... Otto. Uh, uh, Otto. If I only know a little bit more about being a secretary, oh, perhaps... Well, I'll be patient, my dear. Very patient. Now, let's see. Um, take a letter. I can't. Remember? That's right. Uh. Well, uh, 
Don't you know any word games or anything? No, sir. But all the while I'm working, I'll be learning shorthand. I'll get one of those little books with all those funny little markings in it. Oh, that's <laughs> fine, fine. You're going to like it here, Helen. I'm going to like you. <laughs> Sit down, my dear. Uh, thank you, but I'm sitting already. No, no, no. Sit over here. By me. Oh, excuse me, but I don't Oh, think come I... on. Come on. I don't know. Don't you think we ought to start stop answering your mail or something? Or... Now, now, don't be like that. Look, if you'll just... And quit following me. I'm not following you. Now, don't get excited. After all, I'm an old friend of the... Stand still! Let me go! My dear girl! You let me go, or I'll, I'll, I'll punch you in the stomach! Oh, no, my dear! Oh, oh yes, no! I oh. will! There, you see? I told you, I warned you! I quit! Do you understand? I quit! Is this the house he lives in? Yes. This is the one, Daisy. I, I was afraid to come back alone. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, you just ring the bell and, and you tell him that you've come for my hat and my coat and my purse and uh, I'll wait right here. Is that so? Uh-huh. Listen, I'll do the waiting. And if you know what's good for you, you'll try to sneak in and get your things without him seeing you. But why, Daisy? Won't you even go in with me at least? I... Well, somebody has to be outside to call for help when you don't come out. Oh, please. Please look at me, Daisy. I'm all upset and... Uh... What's that? Look, it's the police. Please, but what for? I don't know, but they're stopping right here. Oh. Let's get out of here, Helen. Oh, oh no, yes. you don't. Stay right where you are, girls. Hey, who are you? Detective Das is the name, Homicide Squad. What are you doing outside this house? Oh, well, we... Well, we, we uh... That's fine. Bring them inside, boys. Okay, Chief. Come on, you. Hey, you, let go. Let us alone. Let... Uh, uh, come right in, sir. You with the butler of this joint? Uh, yes, sir. Well, where's the body? Body? Well, what, what's he mean? Keep quiet. What were you girls doing out front? Nothing. Oh, yes, we were. She came here to get her things, her coat and her hat and her purse. Helen, let's get them and get out of this joint. Oh, by all means. So you came to get your things. And would you mind telling me when you left them here? Yes, this morning, in that room right over there. Well, that's fine. Let's go get them. All right. There, you see? There's my purse and there's my coat right over there. And... Oh, Helen! What's the matter, girls? Didn't you ever see a dead man before? Who is it? It's Otto. Otto, eh? Call him by his first name, eh? Nice point. Well, well... What happened to him? He's dead, lady. But of course you don't know anything about it. No. No. Oh, let's get out of here, Daisy. Oh, I wouldn't leave. Let's go in the other room there and talk. Don't do it. You don't have to talk without a lawyer. Get Ken. Well, what's there to talk about? I was here this morning, of course, but I didn't have anything to do with this. Oh, of course not. But let's talk anyway. Why did you kill him, sister? I didn't. All I did was run out of here. Okay, why did you do that? Well, I mean, I, I hit him first and then I ran oh, out Oh, you of hit him, eh? Yes, Two fist marks right through the head, eh? Is he shot? Where'd you hide the gun? Now, where's the money? Where's the $12,000 you took out of that desk? $12,000? I'm going home. Oh, no, you're not. You're coming downtown with me, No, honey. I'm not. I'm Joe, not. grab this, Dave. Take it to my office and keep her there. Hey, cut it out, will Come you? on, lady. We're going Don't for a little like ride. <laughs> All right, now, Mrs. Bartlett, let's have the story. You go to his home. Is that right? So far, yes. There he sits. The man that you thought loved you. But he don't anymore, and he just told you so. So you stand looking at this man. Looking and hating like only a Dane can hate. And all at once, out comes your gun. Bam! Bam, bam! You said he was shot twice. All right. <laughs> bam, bam. Trailer topples up his chair. Right on his puss. And out you fly so excited you forget your purse and stuff. <laughs> there you are, simple as that. Say, that'd make a good story. You mean that I did it because he... he... That's it, that's it. Now, come on, come on, confess right now, and we'll duck the electric chair. I guarantee you'll get nothing worse than life. Life? But I didn't do it. I say you did. I don't care what you say. I did not do it. And anyway, if I did do it like you said, where does the $12,000 come in? Huh? Oh, that. But wait. Wait, now I know what happened. All at once is clear to me. That's fine. You don't love him, see? Uh-huh. You never did love him. Uh -huh. You don't love nobody. You're that type of dame. Gee, go on. You know he's got the 12,000 in the desk. So you wait your time until he's not looking. Then, bam! Bam, bam! All right! <laughs> anyway, you let him have it. Then you take the dough. But you're scared, so you run out and forget your stuff. <laughs> well, how do you like it? What do I get for it? The chair. I don't like it. Hey, Chief, 
They just found the money. It was in the desk all along in the cigar box. What? Get out of here. That makes you and your little story sound pretty silly, doesn't it? Well, a man can make mistakes. You can't always be right. Oh, uh, yeah. Say, you know something? You know how I'd have figured this thing out? No, and I don't care. Well, just look at me. Now, look at me for a minute. I'm a poor, trusting working girl until I meet Otto at a, at a gay house party, see? Yeah. My husband's always been kind to me, but he's away from home so often on business, and, and on his last trip, he's gone a year. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Well, I'm pining, literally pining away for companionship. Mr. Crater, Otto, that is, see? He sees this, and, and soon, soon my husband leaves me. Does, huh? Yeah. I come to Otto, ask for help. He laughs at me. That's a guy for There's you. There's only one course for me. I tell him I'll go to the papers, ruin him in business if he doesn't help me. And slowly, he opens his desk drawer and, and takes out a gun. I reach for it, we scuffle. Suddenly, a shot rings out. Two shots. All right, two shots. And Crater lies dead at my feet. Boy, oh, boy. Now, there's a story for you. What would I get for that? Five years. Five years at the most. Maybe nothing. There, you see. I know how to do it. You offer me life to the electric chair, and I give you five years to nothing. Sure, sure. Now, we'll just get that on paper, and you can sign it. Oh, by the way, what happened to the gun? What gun? Well, the gun you were just talking about, the gun you and Otto were fighting for. Oh, we weren't fighting for any gun. But you just said that... Oh, that. Oh, no, that wasn't true. I was just making it up like you were doing. Do you mean to tell me that... Of course, and stop yelling. Oh! Hey, Chief, we found the gun in the Crayler murder. Yeah, where was it? In this woman's apartment in the bureau drawer, and two bullets fired here. <laughs> in your apartment, Mrs. Bartlett. Well. Well, of course you found that gun there. Why shouldn't you? That gun belongs to my husband. Your husband, eh? Yes. With two bullets fired? Well, uh, wait, wait a minute. I, I got I... it now. I got it. He finds out another man has been after his wife. He goes to the man. They argue. The husband pulls out a gun. Bam, bam. Kramer? <laughs> Cold as a cucumber. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, yes. No, that isn't it. It couldn't be. Do you want to know what really happened? Don't tell me! Joe, get her out of here! And send for a, an ambulance out there. Call her husband. I want both of them held without bail. Here's your party. Five minutes. Thanks. Oh, Helen. Daisy. Daisy, did you hear anything about Ken? Yeah, they got him. He's in the other wing. In the jail? Yeah. They say he killed him. Oh, but he didn't. Listen, Daisy, I shot those two bullets from that gun over a month ago when I was out in the country working on my book. I shot them at a tree. You did? Of course. Well, then we can take them out to where you were and show them the bullets in the tree. Why, of course we can, Daisy. Daisy, I didn't hit that tree. <laughs> In a moment, Mr. DeMille presents Act Two of True Confessions, starring Loretta Young and Fred McMurray with Ruth Donnelly. During our brief intermission, let me present three friends. They each have something to tell you about new Quick Lux Flakes. Here comes our first friend, Speed. New Quick Lux is so fast, gives suds in a second. Yes, in water as cool as your hand, new Quick Lux Flakes dissolve three times as fast as any of ten other leading soaps tested. And here's our second friend, Thrift. New Quick Lux goes so far. Yes, it gives more suds, ounce for ounce, even in hard water, than any of ten other leading soaps tested. In other words, Lux is thrifty. It goes further. And now, here's our third friend, Lux Purity. New Quick Lux is so gentle. It's safe for everything, safe in water alone. Yes, New Quick Lux is gentle. It's fast, too, and it goes further. Yet it costs no more. Look for it in the same familiar Lux package. Get a big box tomorrow and use new Quick Lux for all your washables, your blouses, dresses, stockings, and underthings, and for your dishes to save your hands. 
Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of True Confession, starring Loretta Young as Helen Bartlett and Fred McMurray as Kenneth Bartlett, with Ruth Donnelly as Daisy. Several hours have passed. The Bartlett's man and wife are still stopping in adjoining wings of the city jail. At last, however, they've been permitted a brief meeting. In the visitor's room, Ken looks despairingly out of the barred window into the busy world from which he was so rudely torn. Helen can stand the silence no longer. Ken. Ken, won't you please sit down? How can we talk when you, you stand there like a pallbearer? How else can I stand when my wife, my own wife... Well, go ahead and say it. Say it. This isn't so bad here. How's the food? All right, I guess. I haven't eaten any. No, you should eat. No matter what happens, you should eat. I'm sorry I yelled. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry they put you in jail. No, that's all right. I always wondered how it was. <laughs> did they, uh... Did they upset the apartment very much? No, just the dresser drawers. Oh. I found some socks I thought I'd lost. <laughs> they were where you keep your manuscripts. Oh, that's good. Ken, all I was trying to do was to get a job. I wanted to help out and... I told you not to. But there were so many things that we needed. Yeah. Well, it's happened, and I'm going to do everything I can. I'll fight this like a case has never been fought before. Uh, gee, I feel better already. But I'm your lawyer and your husband, and I have to know all the facts. Of course. Maybe I'd better tell you what I found out first. Oh. They've got a mile of evidence lined up against you. First, they can prove that you went to Crayler's house. That's right, I did. And they can prove that you struggled with him. I punched him in the stomach. And then you ran from the house. Yes. And finally, we might as well face the fact that they can prove the bullets came from our gun. What? But how can they prove a thing like that? The ballistics expert. He says that the bullets that killed Crayler came from the gun they found in our apartment. Well, who cares what he says? What does he know about it anyway? I said he's an expert. That's his work. That's his career. Well, what's his career to us? He can be wrong, can't he? Helen, listen to me. You can't even think of trying to convince a jury that you didn't fire those shots. Do you know what'll happen if you try to enter a regular plea of not guilty? What? Well, let's not talk about it. I know what'll happen. They'll prove that I did do it. They'll put me in prison for life. Why, maybe they... Maybe it'll even be worse, I said let's I... not talk about it. Oh. I'll have to sort of get my bearings again. Before I saw you, I thought we were going to plead self-defense, but... You... You mean killing him because... because Certainly. He... A woman has a right to protect herself against a brute. Oh. Well, there's no use thinking about it. If you're going to claim you didn't do it, throw our case out the window. Helen. Hmm? Weren't you listening? What, what are you thinking about? About you in court. Oh, I'd love to hear you. Fighting for a woman's life. Why, it's a case you've always hoped for, Ken. It's your big opportunity. Do you think you could win? Fighting for you? Uh -huh. Of course I'd win. Oh, I can just see you standing there, pleading for me, your wife, whose only crime was defending herself against this human wolf. Oh, you poor kid. We'll oh. show them, though. We'll vindicate you in the eyes of the world. Yes, and in defending me, you'll be pleading the case of all womankind. Oh, it's wonderful. You'll be sensational. Do you think so? Of course I do. Oh, forget it. You're going to say you didn't do it. Again? Ken, I guess I'll have to tell you the truth. You might as well know. What? Tell me what. I did kill Otto Crayler. Hey, uh, paper, paper, Helen Bartlett confessed to murder. Helen Bartlett tells all. She killed him, oh, she killed him. Paper. I don't care what you say. You didn't kill Otto Crayler. Not so loud, Daisy. I did, too. I was with you when you went back. You were as surprised as I was. Will you shut up. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you're right in the middle of one of your lying nightmares, and I'm going straight to Ken. Oh, no, Daisy, don't. Why, if Ken ever found out about this, he'd... Now look, will you please mind your own business? No. Did you or didn't you kill him? No, of course I didn't. Well, then why did you say you did? I don't know exactly. I was talking to Ken and, gee, all at once it just popped out. We were both so excited about how we could prove I shot him for a good reason and, well, it seemed like the only chance I had to go free was to say that I did it. What a mess you're in. I know. No. No, I'm not either. Everything's going to be all right. But if you say anything, Daisy, this will be the end with Ken, and I'll go to jail for perjury. Well, isn't that better than going to the chair? Oh, Daisy. No, I didn't mean to scare you. Well, you're not scaring me exactly. And understand this, Daisy. 
It's too late to try to change anything now. You'll ruin my life and you'll spoil Ken's big chance and you'll put an end to everything. Is that clear? They're waiting for you in court. Just a minute, Matron. Is that clear, Daisy? Oh, uh, I guess so. Oh, thanks. Uh, all right, Matron, I'm ready. Paper, paper, made a trial open. Husband will defend wife. Paper and free to flee for hell And the state will prove that the defendant, Helen Bartlett, is guilty of murder in the first degree. A murder that calls for payment with her very life. The state will show that the defendant... We will show in our defense that Helen Bartlett killed only to protect herself. An act which has been justified in our courts since time immemorial. I was Mr. Kraler's butler. Helen Bartlett came to the house at exactly... Well, I questioned her the morning of the murder. First she denied it. Then confessed to it. Then denied it. Then confessed it again. Then denied it. She had me off my nut! Your Honor, I object. Your Honor! Order! Order! Court's adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow. Say, Bartlett. Yes? There's a man here to see you. My husband? No. Says his name is Jasper. Says it's very important. Important? Oh, all right. Okay, you, come on. I'll be back for you in five minutes. Good evening, Mrs. Bartlett. May I sit down? Thank you. Well, what did you want? What's so important? Nothing is important. That's what makes life so simple. Am I right? But, but you told them you had to see me. Why? I wanted to get a good look at you, my dear, so that I might understand. Understand what? I am Charles Jasper, criminologist in the utmost. You are a specimen under my microscope, and you're going to fry. What? You're going to fry, burn in the chair. Get out of here. You're crazy. Sure. Getting lots of publicity, aren't you? Big articles, pictures in the papers. You like it, don't you? It's the nectar of the gods for fools. And whether you killed Crailer or whether you didn't, you're going to look pretty. Fry. Get out of here! Get out! Get out! Helen, what's the matter? Major, oh, open up here. Coming. Ken, he's crazy. Get him out of here. Get him. Hey, who is this guy? I'm Charles Jasper, <laughs> criminologist in the utmost. Oh, Ken, please. All right, Mr. Outside. Come on. Certainly. It was nice meeting you, Mrs. Bartlett. Good evening. This way. Oh, Ken. What did he want? <laughs> Nothing. He said he just wanted to look at me. All right, all right. Now, take it easy. He's just one of those nuts that hang around courts. He can't hurt you. Oh, Ken... I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, well, I can't stay long. You've got to get some rest. We may have a tough day tomorrow. I know. How do you feel, honey? I don't know. Sometimes just sitting in court and listening, I I want to see myself electrocuted. And Ken, if I feel that way, how will the jury feel? Now, don't worry, please. I, I haven't even started yet. Well, I can't help being scared, can I? Oh, Ken, listen... I've done something that's awfully silly. I, I know, dear. No, but... darling, you don't know. Look, look, this is all a mistake. It's a great, big, crazy joke, see? I didn't kill Otto Crailer. I was lying. Can you understand that, Ken? Darling, can't you understand why I'd lie about a thing like that? I, I know how you feel, Helen. You're nervous and excited, worrying about what might happen. But it's not going to happen. Because we're fighting honestly and openly, admitting that you killed Otto Crailer. And if we can't win the right way, the honest way, we don't want to win. Oh, Ken! The defense will proceed. Your Honor, I want to thank you for permission to have the scene in Otto Crailer's home reenacted for the benefit of the jury. But first, I must have the defendant and her motives clearly established in their minds. Helen Bartlett is charged with murder in the first degree, meaning that she did willfully and premeditatedly take a life. To that charge, our answer is not guilty. But in an effort to convince you of our sincerity, I shall call upon the defendant to stand and face the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Helen Bartlett, my wife, who on August 8th killed Otto Crailer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is the morning of August 8th, and I, I am Otto Crailer, and this is the office in his home. What follows is an honest reenactment of what occurred that morning, as related to me by my wife. I'm ready, Helen. Well, the butler let me in. He showed me into the office, and... And he offered me a drink. You refused, of course. Oh, of course. Go on. And uh, then Mr. Crater came in. Yes. Uh -huh. And he said to you, Well, well, 
Good morning, my dear. Good morning, Mr. Crayler. Now sit down, my child. The first thing we must do, Mrs. Bartlett, is reach an understanding. Is that clear? All I know, sir, is that I'll work hard and study while I'm working. Oh, why work hard? Because that's the only honest way to make a living. Oh, you have a lot to learn, Helen. Now, here, sit over here by me. Let me alone. Oh, but my child, I'm an old friend of the family. Let me go. Must a woman put up with this because she needs a job? Oh, now, take it easy, Helen. We're going to get along just fine, just as soon as you... Don't you dare to kiss me. I'll do what I please. Be quiet, you fool. Let me go. Let me go, or I'll punch you in the stomach. Oh, no, you won't, Helen. Oh, yes. We're going to... Oh! Oh, Ken, darling, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 go on. Don't stop. All right. You you pay for this, Mrs. Bartlett. No woman can do this to Otto Crayler. Where's my gun? I'll kill you for this. Stop. Give me that gun. Bam, bam. Oh, you shot me. Oh, I killed him. And and that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is the true picture of the death of Otto Crayler. Oh, Oh, darling, sit down. Did I hurt you? No, no, no. I'll be all right. Don't leave the stand, Mrs. Bartlett. I have a few questions. Oh, certainly. Mrs. Bartlett, you took that job at $50 a week. Yes, sir. Can you take shorthand? No, sir. But you took the job in good faith. Oh, yes, I did. And you can't type either. No. Nice going for a private secretary at $50 a week. Mrs. Bartlett, could it be that in your charming way, you, shall we say, forced Mr. Crayler to employ you on threat of exposing your friendship with him? Say, how would you like a poke in your fat nose? Your Honor, I object to the district attorney's unfounded and vicious accusations. If he doesn't stop it, I'll knock his teeth out. Order! Order! You'll knock whose teeth out? Yours, you big clunk! Order, I say! Order! Order! Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to ask yourselves this. You'll be going through that little door in a few minutes to decide the destiny of a human life. Ask yourselves this. Has not womankind the right to work so there shall be bread in her home? Has not womankind the right to expect decency from her employer whom she trusts? Has not womankind the sacred right to protect herself at any cost? I know what your answer will be, ladies and gentlemen. For I know you are honest, wise, and just. And I place the destiny of my wife in your hands. Your Honor, the defense rests. Ken, oh, darling, you were wonderful. I I think it'll be all right, Helen. I don't think so. Ken, it's that crazy man again. Get out of here, you. A wonderful defense, Mr. Bartlett. Well done, I say. But I still think your wife is going to fry. I said get out of here. You have just heard Loretta Young, Fred McMurray, and Ruth Donnelly in Act Two of True Confession. During this brief intermission before Act Three of our play, we bring you our fashion scout, Libby Collins. What's new in styles this week, Libby? This week, I'm bringing you news of the stocking world. It's a mighty important world, too. Do you know, Mr. Roig, how many stockings are made every year in the United States? Why, hundreds of thousands, I imagine. (laughs) You're way off. More than one billion pairs are made every year. New styles are being developed, and this week, even a new kind of stocking is making its appearance. Oh, you mean the nylon stockings I've been reading about? Yes. On Wednesday of this week, the new nylon stockings go on sale in many stores. We've been hearing for a long time about this new kind of stocking made out of coal, air, and water. And, of course, we women are eager to see them and try them. Coal, air, and water. (laughs) It's certainly strange to think of something as sheer and lovely as stockings coming from those. Mm -hmm. Beauty out of a test tube. Well, we women are lucky to have beautiful hosiery, whether it's nylon or silk. And we're lucky to have an easy way of keeping our precious stockings lovely looking longer. You'll be interested to know, Mr. Roick, that makers of nylon stockings advise caring for them exactly the same way you do silk ones. And of course, Libby, I don't have to tell you that caring for stockings with gentle lux is ideal, as millions of women have testified by their daily use of these mild, pure flakes. Of course. All lovely stockings need the gentlest kind of washing. And when women think of gentle washing, they think of Lux Flakes. And now for more stocking news. We'll see stockings not only of nylon and silk this summer, but of Lyle, because another spring fashion is the knee-length sock. They're like the wool ones we had last fall, only these are made of Lyle. They come in colorful shades and patterns and often in checks. They're for sports, aren't they, Libby? Yes, and to wear in the country. Incidentally, fashion experts say the open toe and heel shoes are still going big this summer. Another reason for taking good care of your stockings. Thank you, Libby. 
The important thing to remember is that lovely stockings, whether they are silk or nylon, lisle or wool, are fine fabrics and need fine fabric care. Always wash them in new quick Lux, the most popular care for fine fabrics in the whole country. When you use Lux for stockings, you help preserve beauty, prolong wear. New Quick Lux comes in the same familiar box. It's fast, thrifty, gentle, and it costs you no more. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We continue with the third act of True Confession. The case of the people versus Helen Bartlett rests. The jury is behind locked doors considering its verdict. And now at last, the doors open and the jury files in. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. And how do you find the defendant? Guilty or not guilty? We find the defendant not guilty. Not guilty. Ken, Ken, I'm free, darling. I'm free. Oh, darling. I told you the truth would win for us. Yes. Not guilty. A new lease on life for Helen Bartlett. A new life altogether. Adoration from the crowd. Can I have your autograph, Mrs. Bartlett? Fame. Can you give us a statement, Mrs. Bartlett? Well, we'll give you $20,000 for your life story. All these are Helen Bartlett. No longer do she and Ken live in a kitchenette apartment in New York. A ten-room house in the country is none too good for such a world-famous pair. Ken? Oh, Ken? Oh, hello. Hello, darling. How about a swim, huh? Oh, no, thanks. Later. Oh. Where were you? Uh, at Dorothy's Tea in Town. I told you, remember? Oh, yeah. What are you doing tonight? Tonight. Oh, tonight I'm going to dictate some more of the novel to Daisy. Oh. How are things going at the office? Oh, good, I guess. More business than I can handle. Oh, oh Ken, did you ever think all this had happened? What do you mean? Oh, everything. The apartment in town, this house, your business, my novel. All we ever wanted, we have now. <laughs> I'm so happy, I'm afraid it's just a heavy dinner. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Oh, darling, what's the matter? Is anything wrong? No, oh, of course not. What could be wrong? I'm making money, you have what you want, you're doing what you like. You're the happiest you've ever been. You just said so. Oh, Kim. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't be that way. Because I can't remember why all this happened. And that's why what I can't understand about you... How you can ever forget that we'd be broke and I'd be happier if... if Otto Crater were still alive. I, I haven't forgotten, Ken. I, I guess I shouldn't have said that. No, no, you're right. Why, here I... I've killed a man and, and I'm happy. Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, maybe it does. Maybe I just don't know how to act in a case like this. Wouldn't it be perfect if... if everything were just as it is except... except that other thing hadn't happened? More than perfect. Mm. But it's too late. Ken... Remember that day in the cell when I... I tried to tell you I was innocent? Yeah, the trial had worn you down. Well, if I hadn't killed him, I mean, just pretend. Pretend? Pretend that anyone would lie about a thing like that? That she'd make a mockery of justice and a fool of the man who was defending her? Leave an unsuspected criminal at large already plotting against his next victim? Why, that would be worse than murder. Yeah, I guess it would, huh? Helen, you're not trying to tell what? me that... What? Oh, nothing, I... I guess the heat's got me. Yeah, it is kind of warm, isn't it? And, um, and then... Here, take this down, Daisy. And then, as McCormick enters Yvonne's room, he was certain that I... Go ahead. Oh, I can't, Daisy. I don't know what's the matter with me lately. I... You having trouble with Ken again? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. I'll bet you don't. Here you are out of one jam and into another. I'm not in a jam. Ken will get over this and everything will be fine again. It's just a matter of time, that's If all. he ever finds out that you he didn't won't kill... He find out. Now, let's get on. McCormick enters Yvonne's room and, and the door opens stealthily and... Uh, who's that? Miss Bartlett. Yeah? He won't go away. Who won't go away, Ella? The man's what's here. But who? What man, Ella? I... Charles Jasper. You. Daisy, he's the one that came to me in the cell. 
What do you want? Nice little place we have here. Hello, my house. What do you mean, your house? Daisy, be careful. It will be my house soon. I've always wanted a nice house. Hello, my house. What do you want? I'm selling wallets. Well, we don't want any wallets, so get out of here. You'll want this wallet. See, it has a name printed on it. Otto Kraler. Otto Kr Where did you get this wallet? Lovely house. Charming. I asked you, where did you get this wallet? Where do you think? It was on Mr. Kraler's desk. I found it there after I killed him. You! You killed him. I, Charles Jasper, utmost in criminologists, committed the perfect crime. And who stole the glory of my deed? Who writes childish articles, gives stupid lectures? Who has lived to see her husband grow sleek and fat upon the fruits of the stolen crime? My crime. You thief. Oh, I, I didn't mean to take anything away from you. I... Where's our liquor? Not the guest soup, our private bottle. Helen, I'm going out and find Ken. Oh, no, Daisy, wait. Uh, Mr. Jasper, th there's a bottle in that cabinet over there, and when you have a drink, will you please go away? Certainly. As soon as you've purchased the wallet, with that bit of leather goes my entire interest in the crime. Don't pay any attention to him, Helen. How do we know he did it? Of course. How do we know you did it? Are you insane? On my word of honor. That isn't enough. Well, for that matter, how did I know you didn't do it? Because I did. Oh. And as for this wallet, unless you buy it from me, you shall be revealed as a perjurer, a common liar, and the prison gate shall clang behind you. Uh, how much do you want for it? The price, complete with crime, is $30,000. 30000 Don't give him a cent. He can't expose you without putting his own pants in the chair. Yes. <laughs> Did she get the chair? No. Will I get the chair? Likewise, no. I have a wife. Crayler tried to give her a job. She turned him down. He insulted her. So I shot him. I don't believe that. Believe what you want. I have an airtight defense, and I'm ready to test it at any time. But, but look, mister, I... I haven't got $30,000. Well, you, you have this house, haven't you? Perhaps I'll take that. Uh, is there a mortgage? Listen, can't we talk about this some of the time? You see, I... I oh, oh, Ken. What's going on here? Well, darling, What's uh, he doing here? I don't know. You see, he came... He... Oh, what's the use? Good evening. What do you want? Shall I tell him, Mrs. Bartlett? No. No, I'll tell him. Ken. Ken, this is going to be the worst thing you've ever heard in your whole life. You're going to leave me and you're going to walk all the way to China or something, but I don't care what happens. I still love you. That's why I do things like this, I guess. I. What are you talking about? Do, do, do you really want to know? Of course I want to know. Well, I... I didn't kill Otto Kraler. You... You didn't kill him? No, he did. Charles Jasper. Oh, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Daisy, Daisy. Oh, grab her. I'll take care of her. Nice girl. What's your name? Get some water. Ken. Ken, it seemed I'd have a better chance if I, if I said I did it than if I told the truth. Why, even you told me that, remember, Ken? And, and so I did it. Oh, I know I shouldn't have, but I did. And, and, and now he's here and he, he wants Keep money. Keep quiet. And... Daisy, are you all right? Well, what happened? Here, take oh. her out on the beach and walk her around. Oh. She needs fresh air. I'll take care of this guy. Ken, I was only trying to... Go on outside. Yes, Ken. Come on, Daisy, I need some air, too. my story, Mr. Bartlett, but you don't have to pay the money all at once. A thousand a month is all right, or I'll take the house. <laughs> Hello, my house. You're very considerate. But what if I tell you to go chase yourself? I'll go to the police. After all, I know a little law myself, young man. Do you know what will happen to your wife? Ten years or more for perjury. And what will happen to you? I'll go free. On the strength of that lie about your wife? I think not. You were after that money they found in the cigar box. Was I? Listen, you might as well get this straight from the start. You can't reopen this case. Why can't I? Because only the condemned person or his representative has a right to do that. And there is no condemned person. Nobody was convicted. What? You mean that's the law? That's the law. Are you trying to tell me there's no justice? Justice and the law aren't always the same. But in this case, they are. Because I'm going to the police. Uh, uh, why? Because you're an admitted criminal and you're at large. But they can't reopen the case. You just told me. No, but you've just attempted extortion. You threatened my wife and demanded money. I did that? What kind of a country is this? Uh, then, uh, get away from that phone. Do you realize you're sending your own wife to jail just to report me? We'll see. Uh, wait, my boy, wait. Whatever we do, let's not lose our heads. Uh, 
there's really no need to call Mr. Bartlett because, unfortunately, I didn't kill Otto Kramer. You didn't kill him? Oh, I'm sorry. Really, I am. Then who did? Control yourself, please. My brother-in-law. I found the wallet in his room and he confessed to me. Then where is he? Dead. Killed the next week in a holdup. An amateurist tap. He couldn't find the money after he uh, disposed of Crayler, so he attempted a trivial holdup in broad daylight, lost his head, and it was in the papers. I don't believe it. I don't care what you believe. I can prove my statements in a court of law. Shall we have a drink? Get out of this house. Certainly. You know, there was a moment when all this was almost mine. When my destiny came with win, one iota being fulfilled. When fortune lifted the corners of her pretty lips as though to smile. And then bared her teeth. But that's life. Goodbye. Goodbye, my house. Is it all right? I, I, I mean, did he tell you? Ken, why don't you speak to me? Yes, he told me. Helen, I think I'll go in the house and lie down. Oh, Daisy, don't leave me alone. I... Goodbye. Uh, that was a silly thing to say, wasn't it? Leave me alone with my own husband. Uh... Ken, did he go? Yes, he's gone. And he won't bother you anymore. Because he's as big a liar as you are. He didn't commit the murder either. He didn't? No, his brother-in-law did. And his brother-in-law's dead. That's all that saved you from ten years in prison. Oh. Because mark my words. If the murder had been at large, I would have gone straight to the police. Oh, that's right. That's what any honest person would have done. You're leaving now. I'm right? catching the 910 to New York. What's left for me? You've made a farce of our lives. You've ridiculed justice, my profession, me. Oh, Ken, I know this is all a nightmare to you, darling. Wondering how and, and, and why everything happened. And I don't think I could ever explain it so you could understand. I do want to say, though, that I, I tried to tell the truth, but it seemed that everything would work out better if I lied. And it did, too. Up till now. Yes, everything worked out beautifully. Here we are, both successful, standing on the biggest lie in the history of mankind. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury... Helen Bartlett is not Helen Bartlett alone. Helen Bartlett is womankind. <laughs> Ain't I the pretty one? And when that terrible moment came, she faced it, afraid but unflinching. Laughing at you, Judge. Laughing at me. Laughing at Otto Crayler. Defending the principle that is her prime heritage. Can I can really... Well, go on, defend it. Think up some more hot ones for your life story in your cockeyed books. I'm going so far away, I won't even know what year it is. And despite everything I've just said, Helen, I still love you. But I'll be darned if I can live a life like ours. Goodbye. Ken, wait. Wait, there's something you ought to know, Ken. I'm sorry. Oh, but I've got to tell you something that's important. Goodbye. Ken, if it's a boy, I'll name it after you. <laughs> what did you say? I said if it's a boy, I'll name it after you. Oh, Helen. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I wanted to surprise you. Oh, oh Helen, when's it going to be? Oh, what, dear? I said, when's it going to be? Oh, oh, well, I don't know exactly. Well, what did the doctor say? The doctor? Oh, oh the doctor, nothing. This, this is the last straw. Even that wasn't true, was it? No, but it could be, couldn't it, Ken? Goodbye. Oh, darling, wait a minute. Please don't leave me, Ken, please. Please, darling, I couldn't help it. Oh, hold me, Ken. Hold me, darling. Oh, Helen. I suppose this is the price of life with a person like you. Happiness, misery, one after the other, till you don't know which is which. And I suppose I'll walk out on you and come back and walk out again. Darling. But first, I'm going to make one last attempt to teach you not to lie. From now on, whenever you lie, we're going to make it come true. Do you understand? Oh, Ken. I think I've told my last one. We bring down the curtain on the last act of True Confession. You'll hear from our stars, Loretta Young and Fred McMurray, in just a moment. But while we're waiting for them to come to the microphone, I'd like to ask a question. When you have an unpleasant task to do, do you complain about it or make the best of it? You know, I think most people try to make the best of things. 
For instance, I read about a woman who hates to wash dishes. But does she complain? No, indeed. She just props a book of poetry on the windowsill above the sink and memorizes a poem while she's doing her dishes. <laughs> How nice, rising above the circumstances. But you know, quite a few women really do hate to wash dishes. Well, it's partly on account of their hands. Well, Sally, you can't blame a woman for wanting to keep her hands soft and lovely looking, even if she does wash dishes every day. That's why I'd like to tell every woman in the country about new Quick Lux and the One Hand Test. Five leading soaps commonly used for dishes, including Lux, were tested. Hundreds of women dipped one hand in Lux suds, the other in suds from another soap. They did this three times a day for weeks under conditions similar to home dishwashing. The results proved Lux kindest to hands. In case after case, the Lux hand was soft and smooth, the other hand rough, red, and unattractive. Now, you can easily prove how kind Lux is to hands if you'll just try new quick Lux for your dishes. There is no harmful alkali, absolutely nothing to dry or roughen your hands in new quick Lux. Get a large box tomorrow to help your hands stay smooth, white, feminine. It comes in the same familiar box at no extra cost. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. As Loretta Young and Fred McMurray return to the footlights, we have a true confession of our own that should be made at once. Pencil and paper, please. What for, Loretta? Well, the true confession is a Cecil B. Minutes. I beg your Cecil pardon. Cecil B. DeMille. I can't say your name, even. Ought <laughs> don't, to be worth something, don't you think, Fred? Don't bother. I was just about to confess that, that until tonight, I was a bit doubtful, Loretta, about you as a liar. You have such an honest look in your eyes. As a matter of fact, C.B., I've been a little surprised all week at the convincing way Loretta told those uh, tall stories <laughs> in the play. <laughs> you know, Fred, I'm thinking seriously of taking up fishing and giving you some competition on tall stories. But what's your latest fantastic adventure, Fred, with our piscatorial friends? Well, C.B., this, uh, this didn't happen to me exactly, so I can't absolutely guarantee it, but a friend of mine just come back from a fishing trip with his brother. Every day the brother, put in, uh, the brother pulled in fish as fast as he could get his line out, but this friend of mine couldn't get a nibble. After about a week of it, he was fit to be tied, so one morning he got up early and bought his brother's boat and tackle and rowed out to the same spot where his brother had been having all the luck. He fished all day and still didn't get a bite. So he finally gave up in disgust and started for home. And just as he pulled away, he heard a hissing sound behind him. He turned around and there was a fish with his head out of the water, and the fish said, Psst, hey, bud, where's your brother? How big was that fish, Fred? That was a small one. He said it was only eight or ten inches long. You know, if he'd exaggerated the size of the fish, I wouldn't have believed that story, would you? Hmm. <laughs> I hope, Loretta, you'll believe me when I tell you that we have a great bill for the Lux Radio Theater next week. I will, I'm sure. What is it, Mr. DeMille? Well, next Monday night, our stars will be Claudette Colbert and Don Amici. And they're going to appear in the Paramount screen hit, Midnight. It's a romantic story of an American girl in Paris pretending to be a baroness. A masquerade fools just about everybody except a taxi driver who happens to be in love with her. Claudette Colbert as the girl and Don Amici as the taxi driver will have the same parts they played in the picture when they meet at our microphone in midnight next Monday night. That's a swell show. Good night, C.B. It certainly is. Good night, Mr. Yeah, good night. Well, and one more true confession. You are both mighty good. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Claudette Colbert and Don Amici in Midnight. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Lou Merrill as Charlie Jasper, Wally Mayer as Darcy, Arthur Q. Bryan as Otto Crailer, Edward Marr as Bill Collector, Warren Ash as Butler, Earl Ross as Prosecutor, Jack Lewis as Detective, Celeste Rush as Matron, and Bernice Pilot as Ella. Loretta Young's current picture is the Columbia production, The Doctor Takes a Wife. Fred McMurray is being seen on the screen in Paramount's Remember the Night and is now making Rangers of Fortune. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>